Hi everybody, Kevin Purcell. I want to show off the new eSword uh, X, which is the eSword version that runs on the Mac. I've got it open here, and you can download this from the Mac App Store. Uh, it's really easy to find. So just go up here and search for e-sword or eSword X, and you'll see that uh, it's right there. And um, I believe it costs a little bit. I've already purchased it or downloaded it and have it installed. Uh, yes, it's $9.99 as you can see uh, over here on this side. And uh, so let's go ahead and open it up. When you open it up, you have a simple interface. For example, I can go to John 3.16, typing up here in the upper corner. Click on that and that'll give you a book chapter verse browser that you can use but uh, we'll use the reference and just type it in type in John 316 now as you can see I've got the King James plus which is King James plus the Strong's numbers and uh, what happens is these become tooltips that you click on a little window pops up if you click on that number it'll open it up over here in the Strong's dictionary now if you download eSword X and it doesn't look just like this come up here to the center of the toolbar as a drop down and this gives you the various views that you can use for example I've got show all views that means that every one of the different kinds of window panes is showing here is your Bible browser here is your commentary window pane here is your dictionary window pane along with the Strong's window pane and down here is the user created content you can have a journal study or topic guide hold down the option key on the new topic button at the far right end of the toolbar to rename this initial topic and so right there hold down the option and it'll give you a chance to renew it so I hit option clicked on this button and the topic note title came up here so I'm just going to cancel out of that and uh, that's where the topics will show up now I don't really use topics that much in eSword I, I to be honest with you I haven't used eSword much at all since uh, way back when but it's still useful now the study notes section you can just simply add text uh, John 316 now it's not normally bold like that I was playing around and made it bold so that's why that's like that is the most popular Bible verse in the world now let's go over here select John 316 hit command J and that turns into a tooltip which then you can click and it'll show that Bible verse in whichever translation is being used um, let's look at the Bible verse <clears throat> you can turn on cross references for that verse uh, you can do sh search results here's the history show the verses that you've looked at since it's been open let's go back to the Bible uh, you can do Bible will just shows that translation um, compare we will compare it with various translations that you have set up the parallel puts it in sort of a table format this is all of John 3 in the ESV the Holman Christian Standard Bible, King James, the Lexham English Bible, and the NIV. Just scroll through it. And then the Harmony of the Gospels. Uh, this will use, uh, you know, if you have a, a Harmony of the Gospels book installed. Let's go back to the Bible. Um, here's how you change your translation. Here's the translations that I have installed. Uh, let's open up the ESV. Now, if you copy it, you can copy and then paste it in. You can paste it into notes, select it all. Um, so these are the various things. Most of this is just the basic Mac OS X uh, right click. It's these top few things uh, that are uh, e sort specific. Let's go over here to the commentary window. Again, this will show you the verse notes, and notice that it travels along with the uh, commentary so if we click on that it'll show you that section of the commentary verse notes for it 
you want to change the commentary just as you would with the Bible you can do it with this um, if it's got a line through it doesn't mean there is that means there's no entry for this section so we will open uh, let's see a J Vernon McGee's commentary now you can look at chapter notes for that section uh, the entire book introduction or go back to the verse <clears throat> We're here in the, the chapter, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, dictionary browser. We can change our dictionary. Uh, let's find something that will most likely show up in all of them, like grace. <laughs> it's amazing it doesn't show up in all of them. Easton's Bible Dictionary, uh, Hastings, Hawker, ISBE, which is one of my favorites. Again, these things will have uh, tool tips that you can click. And again, then Strong's down here is the uh, Strong's Original Language Dictionary. You can also change it if you have different ones that are Strong's related. King James Commentary is Strong's related. You can also enter it directly. I don't know what number we'll get, but let's do, uh, there we go, Epistolo, I believe. So that's basically the uh, eSword interface. What I haven't shown you here is the Bible bookmarks. I haven't set any yet, but you could set, set one right there. Now we have one. The file menu preferences don't show much. It's basically just showing uh, you, letting you pick the uh, different uh, text fonts that you want, the color we set it to look like that. That's pretty ugly. But that gives you an idea. Lamp light gives it sort of a sepia look to it. And then daylight, a bright. Um, <clears throat> here's how you download resources. You can either import them or you can even delete resources. But download them by going there. That was a file, resource, then download. and Or you can hit Command D. This shows the books that I have installed. I didn't install everything. There is some paid content in here, but let's say you'll notice it's locked. I have a few locked books that are available in my uh, installation. But what if I don't? Well, if I hit download, it's going to come up with this thing here, and it'll ask you for your credentials, your email address, your product key. You can either purchase it from the Lockman Foundation, or you can recover the product key from the Lockman Foundation and uh, that'll take you to that book so I can enter my email address and see if I have it. We were unable to successfully uh, to find a successful purchase. Uh, that's unfortunate because I know I do own it and I haven't figured out what the problem is here Maybe it's a different under a different email. It was a long time ago that I bought it, so that that's possible. Anyway, you can recover your product key, which is sort of this, what we just did there, or purchase it if you want it, and that'll take it to the store to purchase it. Another one is the New English. Um, so let's go to Bible.org see if we. If you're interested in buying that, notice it's $20. All right. There's other things, commentaries. Again, I have a number of commentaries already. Uh, it behaves the same way. Reference books. There's a ton of free reference books that you can download. And then devotion books as well. So we'll back out of that. If you go into the Bibles, there's a menu-based uh, organization, look up a reference, go to the next chapter. But notice that this is a, a good way to find these keystrokes. For example, if I hit Command L, it'll put the cursor in here so I can begin typing. So uh, just to show you that again, let's go Command L and Romans 3.23. So now it's highlighted for me. If I want to go to the next chapter, I hit the command and then brackets. So that takes us to Romans 4, Romans 5, Romans, and then back and forth there. Uh, format, again, this is just the formatting uh, that we saw earlier. 
bookmarks, highlighted verses, tagged verses. Tagged verses are when you add a topic to a verse. And then just uh, these windows, you can open up reference books. That's an entirely different um, browser window that opens. See, notice it's got eSword behind it there. So you can open up different uh, books, hit the drop down to find other stuff. Not much in there. All right, so we'll close out of that. Uh, go to Bible reading. That shows you today's Bible reading. You can use find different ones uh, based on the date. Anyway, um, super search and then sermon audio. That's kind of interesting. Super search is it'll search everything. So again, let's find grace. Notice it's taking a little while because it's searching all the books that we own. Well, that's doing that. Uh, actually, it won't let me. <laughs> that's going to take a little while. But you get the idea. I'm going to back out of that. Uh, go to sermonaudio.com. This will open up a sermon audio browser. It's got Romans 3.23. It will try to find sermons on that. Let's get there's three one rather. I bet we find one on John three sixteen. There we go. So now Dr. Ian K. Paisley. We can listen to It that. is a great privilege for me to be here. Third, prayer is appointed by so now, Arthur Pink. Um, and then that'll just take you to the web page, uh, which is loading here in my browser. All right, so let's get out of there. So that's eSword. Uh, I am impressed. It's simple, which eSword always has been. It's a great tool for people who don't want to spend a lot of money. Uh, it does offer the option to upgrade with some more modern resources, and uh, it will expand with your ability. You can import. Uh, you can add user files either through AirDrop or by importing them. You can import files that you've created. eSword has a huge community of people from uh, who, who use the program that have created resources, uh, third-party resources that uh, others have made. You can download some for free. You can buy some as we've seen. It's a, a nice little package. Uh, the $10 fee is more than you're used to paying for eSword. Previously, they've allowed it for free, but I don't uh, have a problem with Rick Myers asking for some money for this version of it. Uh, Apple fans are usually willing to pay a little bit more than Windows users are. And for that $10, if you're an eSword fan, uh, there we go, finally got our results <laughs> uh, from our search for grace. Uh, so now you can see it in all the different books. All words, any words, or phrase. Let's... Uh, and then it shows it to you here. Now that might be really useful for Biblical Illustrator, one of the resources, to find some uh, illustrations on that topic. But like I said, it's a, a great tool. I, I like it. I'm glad that I have it. And I personally have more complicated and powerful Bible software available to me. And so I'm not likely to use eSword much. But if I was a um, the average person who's not a preacher or a pastor, uh, just wants something simple that they can use uh, to study the Bible on their Mac, eSword is probably one of the better options for them other than just going to a website. This has been Kevin Purcell. Thanks for watching.